Today I'm visiting a working fruit farm, but I'm not here for just any old fruit. This is the home of the king of fruits. Which fruit am I talking about, you may ask? We'll find out right after this. A big warm welcome to TW Wow and Wow. We do have the king of fruit right with us today. It's the pineapple. I love pineapples. This is Chris from Go Winter Pineapple Farm. Tell me, why are they called the king? Because they were first found in South America in 1530 by the early Spanish explorers. And the only people who received them at that time were the kings and queens of the world. So the royalty. It's look royalty. At, look at those. How many pineapples do you grow here? Approximately three million. Three million. How many people does it take to look after three million pineapples? About 20. Oh, very, very efficient. Now, we're going to be having a look at all sorts of things from planting to picking to packing of pineapples. But first, let's see what else is coming up on today's TW Wow. Nat gets a tour of the oldest lighthouse on the mainland. Kale shows us the benefits of growing your own veggie garden. And Tess is looking for the spiciest sausage in a factory at Midwest. We've got plenty more pineapples coming up. This is kind of thick and spiky getting through here. Hope there's no snakes, Chris. I hope not. <laughs> hope not. But first, Adam's heading out on his bike. Let's see what he's up to. Learning to ride a bike for the first time can be a pretty scary experience. You have to pedal well, you have to keep your balance, and most importantly, you have to prevent falling on your face. Can't get enough of DW? Well, why don't you hop online? At totallywild.com.au, you'll find heaps of awesome stuff, from online videos to information on how you can get on the show. What's stopping you? Log on to totallywild.com.au. Today we're bringing the show to you from Gawinta Pineapple Farm. Love pineapples. Now, Chris, tell me, what is this field here? Well, this is a field that we planted approximately two weeks ago. Wow, and all these little pineapples. Now, Chris, how do you actually plant a pineapple? Well, we take the crown, which is the head. Yep. Like this one. Look at the roots on that one. That's only about two weeks since it originally planted. Very impressive. OK, you'll put it back in now. Put it back in the ground. And then we need to wait a couple of years for the fruit to come onto there. About two years. For it to grow big enough and sweet enough. That's so right. what is a pineapple like? It likes good drainage, nice ample rainfall, and nice warm sunny days. Oh, OK. Well, we need our patience for our pineapples, but they're great fruit. And we're going to continue with the pineapple journey when we come back. Welcome back. You're watching TW Wow. It's all about pineapples and wow, these are good looking pines. How do you tell if they're ripe for the picking, Chris? Well, we either grow them, we pick them when they're ripe. Yep. So you look for a nice yellow, on yellow the outside. on the outside. Yes. And you want a nice creamy yellow on the inside. Oh, yum. Do you ever have to actually have to taste test? Certainly. Because you work here. Can I have a go? Have a go. That's already, that is the most perfect looking pineapple. Look how juicy. I could eat the whole lot, but I won't. Here we go. Mmm. That is the best pineapple. It's so fresh and juicy and sweet. You know, Nick from Ricefield in South Australia has emailed him wanting to dare Tess into tasting the spiciest sausage. I think I'd rather pineapples. Let's see how she went. Mm. Thanks for the dare, Nick. Now, if I'm going to be eating the spiciest sausage there is, I need to find a sausage factory. I'm not really one to enjoy hot and spicy food, so I'm really looking forward to this. We're at the Gawinter Pineapple Farm, and I tell you what, it is action-packed here. They're actually picking pineapples right now. How many pineapples can these guys pick in, say, an hour, Chris? About a thousand. A thousand pineapples per person? Per person. Per hour. That is amazing. This is Pineapple City. The smell is beautiful. I love the smell of pineapple. Is there a special technique to picking pineapples? No, not really. Here's oh. one Stacey's left for you. What do I do? Just put your hand on, on the top yep. and push it away from you. OK. Push. Oh! That is easy. I just snapped it off. Look at that. Is that a good pineapple? That's a good pineapple. That is absolutely beautiful. Can't wait to eat it. Now, after this, we'll be uh, back in the packing shed. to the Go Winter Pineapple Farm where we've been out in the field seeing pineapples being planted, being picked and now, Chris, we're in the packing shed. It's a hub's activity here. How does it all work? 
Well, the fruit gets picked off the farm, comes along this conveyor behind us, they get graded by size. All right, so these, these ones in front of us look pretty big, are they? They are, these are certainly very big. Now, this must be a very, very busy re region for pineapples. Well, the Sunshine Coast is the second biggest region in Australia. And how many pineapples would come through this packing shed, say, per day? 57,000. 57,000 pineapples. No wonder they just don't stop behind us. Well, it's the biggest shed, biggest packing shed in Australia. All right, well, doesn't surprise me then. So, really, it's taken two whole years, around about, to produce something as beautiful. That is absolutely perfect, is that? And how will it be inside? Absolutely perfect. Oh, sweet and juicy. Beautiful. While well, we've been having a great time checking out all of these pineapples, Nat is about to take a tour of a very old lighthouse. The western coast of Victoria has claimed more shipwrecks than any other stretch of Australian coastline. The treacherous seas and hostile weather conditions saw hundreds of lives lost. A sad but fascinating history that led to the building of this place, the Cape Otway Light Station. That lighthouse behind me is the oldest lighthouse on mainland Australia. The light, which has been in continuous operation since 1848, is perched on towering sea cliffs where Bass Strait and the Southern Ocean collide. Hi guys, welcome to Cape Otway Light Station. My name's Paul Thompson and I'm the manager here and going to take you on a tour this afternoon. The reason why the lighthouse is built here is we've got the Southern Ocean crashing into Bass Strait. It's a very treacherous ocean with, ocean with many shipwrecks along this coastline. This is known as the Shipwreck Coast and King Island, which is 88 kilometres that way, is known as the Graveyard Coast. And there's two major shipwrecks that occurred here, one in 1835 and then one in 1845. And because of that one in 1845, when 399 people lost their life, the light station had to be built. And we're now going to have a look at how the light station was built and the lighthouse and see how hard it was to get the rocks here and the stones to build the lighthouse. Who's keen to find out about that? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's go. We'll go and see if we can shift some of those rocks. Just through this way, folks. All right, folks, this block here, it's about a quarter of the size of the blocks used to build the lighthouse. But what I want to do is I want to have a go at seeing how well we can shift it. What do you reckon? Do you reckon you can shift this rock? Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Let's go for half the class and see how easy it is to shift this rock. OK, you guys go on the rope here. You guys just grab a seat there. Just sit down there, we'll be fine. And we'll see how tough these guys are here. OK, kids, when you're ready, give it a big heave. Heave. Come on, guys, give it a big heave. Put some muscle into it. Ah. Oh. Come on, oh, it's not going to work. You guys jump in, they need some help. Are you ready? Yeah! One, two, three, three! Whoa, we did it! Hooray, look at that! <laughs> okay, this building here is the telegraph station, built in 1859 to connect Tasmania to the mainland by a subsea telegraph cable running across Bass Strait. Then it was used to signal to ships as the Lloyds of London signalling station with the big flag pole there and the flags. So we're going to have a look inside there and see some of the machinery and some of the equipment that the telegraph operators used and what their living conditions were like. OK, guys, here we are, Cape Otway Lighthouse, what all these buildings were built to support, and we're now going to go up to the top of it. Who's ready to go up the top of the lighthouse? You ready to come? Yeah! OK, let's go. Head on down. Whoa, guys, how hard is this? Yeah. And you know what? The worst part is we're only halfway there. Let's keep going. <laughs> OK, guys, so the job of a light keeper was really to keep this light going all night, every night. So they'd be doing three, four-hour shifts and they'd come up here and back in the days of whale oil, they'd make sure all the whale oil was topped up, the burners were working properly, and they'd also do weather observations at night and record any ships going past. But the main thing was to keep this beautiful glass lens polished and clean so that the light was as bright as it could possibly be. Well, I don't know how I would have gone climbing all of those stairs so many times a day to keep the light burning brightly. In fact, I think on my watch, there may well have been a few more of those sunken ships. But I can tell you what, the view from up here is definitely worth the climb. 
Lady Elliot Island is at the very southern tip of the Great Barrier Reef, about 80 kilometres outside Bundaberg. But don't think that it's just a gateway to the rest of the reef. This place is teeming with life. Fish, dolphins and loads of other marine creatures thrive in the Coral Cay and Lagoon on the east side of the island. But not all the action around here is under the sea. It's also home to thousands of birds and heaps of plants. But believe it or not, this island hasn't always been like this. 3,000 years ago, when it first appeared above sea level, it was just rubble. This was until life was brought here by a very unlikely source, bird poo. Guano is the poo of seabirds, bats and seals. But this isn't just regular droppings. This stuff is power poo. It can bring nutrients to the most barren of soils. So when seeds from bird poo arrived on the island, a tropical paradise erupted. But that super poo wasn't all good news for Lady Elliot Island. Guano is also great for gunpowder, and in 1863, the miners realised that that poo could mean money in their pockets. Guano was only mined on Lady Elliot Island for 10 years, but a lifetime of damage was done. Nearly a metre of soil was removed, and the island was left as lifeless as the day it emerged. Luckily, regeneration efforts have restored Lady Elliot Island to its full glory. Now it's a part of the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park and has the second highest protection rating possible. Any higher and we wouldn't be allowed to be here. And what a shame that would be because it is home to beautiful sunsets like this one. the end of the show and hasn't it been great learning all about the juicy sweet pineapple surprise <laughs> you're the best thank you very much a pineapple sundae and is it pineapple ice cream it certainly is oh. okay why don't you take a look at what's happening on the next tw and we'll take this beautiful treat do you want to race bmx and get air like this twists, flip tricks, these are just some of the terms used in the world of street unicycling. Well, how do I score? Uh, it's not easy, um, but it's a team game and your team works the ball around. Oh, this is so delicious. Thank you so much for joining us. That is it for today's episode of TW. Chris, thanks so much for showing me around and for the Sunday, of course. That's fine. Thank you. Well, let's dig in. Certainly. See you next time.